Hello and welcome. I am Ladi Akiri Dunwale. Tonight, House of Representatives demands the removal of the Inspector General of Police from office over alleged poor performance. Senate rejects report by committee mandated to investigate the failure of the RG to arrest and prosecute the perpetrators of the recent killings in Benway State. Army launches operation to tackle herdsmen and farmers' crisis, as well as kidnappings and other crimes in the north central region of Nigeria. And South Africa's African National Congress in talks with President Jacob Zuma over transition of power. And on business news tonight, federal government to invest 1.3 trillion Naira annually to capital projects in order to bridge infrastructure deficit in the country. On sports news, Manchester United striker Alexis Sanchez accepts 16 month suspended jail sentence for tax fraud in return for avoiding trial in Spain. We begin tonight with a call by lawmakers in the House of Representatives on the President to sack the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, and replace him with a more professional police officer. The call comes in the wake of recent activities of some suspected political thugs in Kano State and what the lawmakers describe as the inability of the police to maintain law and order in that state. The lawmakers also passed a motion demanding the immediate removal of the force public relations officer, Mr. Jimo Moshud, for making derogatory remarks against the governor of Benway State. Our correspondent, Larry Lassisi, has that report. If we are seeing somebody that make a statement... Uh, that the first public relations officer appearing on our breakfast program, Sunrise Daily. The comments he made there has continued to draw reactions. These lawmakers from Benue State in the House of Representatives say the comments indicate that the police is partisan. We demand for the immediate resignation of the PPRO, Jimo Moshud, for professional misconduct and partisanship. But he should be fired if he fails to resign. Additionally, the PPRO should withdraw his description of Governor Otom as a drowning man, and the IGP should tender an unreserved apology to Governor Samuel Otom and the people of the state. To leave that post the matter is also brought up before the House as a motion. So the House therefore resolves to instruct the Inspector General of Police to provide an unreserved apology to the Benue State Governor over the derogatory statements of the police PRO and relieve the PRO of that position immediately. What the motion the enjoys the support of most lawmakers. How can the Inspector General be talking about laws if they feel that the laws are bad? Our laws have also provided solution to that. They should go to court to nullify such laws and not to be making all transits that will give those who are supposed to obey the law impunity to disobey the law and continue to cause crisis in society. If the spokesman of the police now say a law is bad, that is in essence telling us is shackling in its constitutional responsibility. Your spokesperson saying that the governor is a drowning man, then we are wondering exactly what do they mean. Let's not treat this matter on the surface. What do they know that we don't know? Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. The ayes have it. The House also considers another motion on the need to curb toggery in political activities in Kanu State and in Nigeria. That the Nigerian police and other security agencies have turned blind eyes to this illegal act of terror that are being perpetrated in the open by the talks in Kano and other parts of the country. The political differences in the state reflect in the debate that follows, but once again the issue narrows down to the performance of the police chief and this new prayer is moved. We delete the prayer there and replace it. Call on the president and commander in chief to replace the IGP with a more professional oriented police officer. I must warn that um, if this amendment is carried, it means that the entire house has lost confidence in the IG. That's just the meaning of the amendment. Okay, I'll put the question. 
Those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Those against it say nay. The eyes have it. Meanwhile, it appears some lawmakers may be opposing the resolution of the House and may move to have the resolution overturned. According to a lawmaker who spoke with journalists after plenary, the matter should have been properly investigated before the resolution to call for the sack of the police chief. The lawmakers are proposing to move the motion at plenary on Wednesday. Landre Lassesi, Channel's Television News. Meanwhile, the Senate has turned down a report by its ad hoc committee mandated to ascertain why the Inspector General of Police did not comply with the Senate directive to arrest and prosecute the perpetrators of the recent killings in Benue State. Our correspondent, Linda Kiwe, reports that the upper legislative chamber rejected the report because of the failure of the committee to speak with the Benue State governor and get his take on the security issues in the state. The chairman of the Senate Committee on Police Affairs, Senator Abu Ibrahim, presents a crucial report on the floor of the Senate. This report details the outcome of the investigation by the committee on reasons why the Inspector General of Police did not comply with a 14-day ultimatum by the Senate to arrest and prosecute the perpetrators of the recent violence in Benue State. The class between farmers and headsmen has intensified in Benue State in recent months as violence has claimed more than 70 lives between December 2017 and January 2018. According to the report, the police chief has arrested 145 suspects involved in the violence, out of which 124 have been charged to court. That between 31st day of December 2017 and 31st day of January 2018, over 21 attacks have been recorded in Benue State. Noting that while 11 were believed to have been carried out by groups suspected to be Fulani Hartsmen, 10 were carried out by groups suspected to be. Ten were, carried, were believed to be carried out by suspected tip militia groups. Senator Ibrahim further explains that in the course of the investigation, the committee observed that there is a wide gap and serious defect in intelligence gathering of the Nigeria police force, primarily because of inadequate funding. That local government council have been rendered ineffective, thereby unable to deal with security issues before this snowball crisis. That inflammatory statements, addresses, and actions of some politicians and the opinion molders have been found to be promoting hatred and such of violence. However, two lawmakers are not satisfied with the report of the committee. I noted that in the statement made by the IG, he copiously mentioned the governor of um, Benue, you know, um, in most of the paragraphs. But I didn't see where the committee made an effort to speak with the governor. Mr. President, the IG has not been fair to the Nigerian people whom he has sworn to an oath to serve. We have thousands who are moving with AK-47 freely and they have not been arrested. As we speak, people are still being killed in Benue State, in Nasrawa State, and in Taraba. Uh, let's send Tabu Ibrahim go back and complete his uh, exercise and present a, a complete report and at that time I will accept contributions for everybody and, and, and I think that's the way forward. Thank you. The committee has one week to include the views of the Benue State Governor in the report and come back to the Senate. Linda Akibe, Channels Television News. Still on the clashes between headsmen and farmers, the Nigerian Army has announced the launch of a military exercise to tackle the crisis as well as kidnappings and other crimes in the North Central region. The operation tagged exercise Cat Race will involve raids, cordon and search operations, roadblocks and checkpoints, as well as shows of force. According to the Chief of Training and Operations of the Nigerian Army, Major General David Amadou, who made the announcement on behalf of the Chief of Army Staff, the exercise will cover Benue, Taraba, Kogi, Nasrawa and Niger States. The 44-day operation is to begin on February the 15th, right through to March the 16th, 2018. Exercise I am at Batuma has become more expedient due to upsurge in cases of armed banditry, kidnapping, and cattle rustling in Kaduna and Niger states. 
as well as other sundry crimes in Koji State and herdsmen and farmers clashes and attacks on innocent members of our communities, particularly in Benue, Taraba, and national states by armed militias. These security challenges have continued unabatedly in these states despite the efforts by sister security agencies to curb them. This exercise will be conducted in conjunction with other security agencies such as Department of State Services, the Nigerian Police, Immigration Services, Nigerian Security and Civil Defense, and others. It will also afford the troops an opportunity to effectively checkmate the dreadful activities of the marauding criminal militias perpetrating criminal acts in these states and its environs. Major General David Amadu, the Chief of Training and Operations of the Nigerian Army. Meanwhile, River State Governor Yestom Wike says he is not happy with the act of playing politics with human lives. He made the call when he visited Governor Samuel Otom in Makodi, the Benue State Capital, to commiserate with him over the killing of over 70 people on the 1st of January 2018. Governor Wike donated the sum of 200 million naira and challenged the Nigerian Governors Forum to defend the integrity and office of governors in the country. Governor Wike of River State alighting from the aircraft into the warm embrace of his Benue counterpart Samuel Otom. Governor Wike's visit to the food basket of the nation is to commiserate with Governor Tom and the people over the recent killings in the state. Benue State had before now been known as a peaceful state. With the hope that this peace will someday return, Governor Wike donates the sum of 200 million naira to the state. Our people have asked us to come and commiserate with you and to say that your pains are our pains. You should take heart. God will fight for you. Amen. The state government will support you with the sum of 200 million naira. The late Governor Tom appreciates his River State counterpart and thanks President Mohamed Buhari for his latest comments on the crisis in that region. I appreciate Mr. President again. Just yesterday in Nasrallah State, in Lafia, he directed that these killers who are known, their video have gone viral on social media and on YouTube. This militia with sophisticated guns and ammunition. They are known by this people. At the end of the meeting, Governor Wike challenges the Nigerian Governors Forum to defend the integrity of the Office of Governors from abusive public servants. And I expected the Nigerian Governors Forum to react to that statement made by the uh, first uh, spokesperson. When we see issues that we should discuss that affects the nation, we are playing part party uh, politics. I, I mean, it, we should go beyond party politics. It doesn't matter whether the governor is a PDB governor or is a APC governor. The donation of money and relief materials to those affected by the herdsmen and farmers crisis in Benue State and its environs might bring temporary relief to the people. But what they would really want is something permanent, living in peace and sleeping with both eyes closed. Terrorist group Boko Haram has released a new video where the leader of the group, Abubakar Shekau, announced that he is tired of the calamity befalling his group. Shekau, in the 10-minute video, lamented the heavy blow dealt on his group by the military and concluded that it is better for him to die and go and rest in paradise. But the terror group leader remains defiant, denying that the military has indeed chased his group out of their hiding places in Sambisa Forest. He says his group still controls that territory. Shekau also threatened that his men would continue to fight regardless of the recent induction of Cameroonian soldiers into the Operation Lafia Dole Counterinsurgency Force. In part two, after the break, federal government says the reinstatement of the head of the NHRS by President Buhari does not stop investigations of alleged fraud against him. Please stay on with us.